Welcome to this video looking at how pH changes during neutralization. Uh, we're looking at uh, mixing acids and alkalis and having a look at how the pH changes when that happens. And this is really aimed at GCSE level. So let's have a think about what we're doing here practically. So the practical setup that we're using here is that we've got this item here on the top here called a burette. Uh, and we've got down here a conical flask, or sometimes known as an Erlenmeyer flask. And the idea is uh, that we're going to put uh, some of our acid or our alkali uh, into the conical flask, a known uh, volume and concentration, uh, and then we're going to add a uh, the other, so if you've got the alkali in here, it's the acid in there, or vice versa, uh, from the burette and the beautiful thing about a burette here is you've got this tap that allows you to control the flow of the liquid out of the burette which just allows you to add this even drop by drop so that you can follow um, the pH uh, very easily. Now there is one way of doing this where you actually add an indicator and I think in this photo there's an indicator here um, and then when the indicator changes colour you stop. That's called a titration and so sometimes these curves are called titration curves. But what we're basically doing in this experiment is that we're imagining that inside here we're able to put some kind of pH probe in there. And what we're then able to do is as we add the acid or alkali from the burette we're able to look and see how does the pH change over the course of this experiment. Now why should the pH change? Let's think about the reaction taking place. So if we've got here an acid uh, reacting with an alkali, alkali, typical strong alkali will be a metal hydroxide and that's going to react to make a salt or a metal salt and water. Um, and it's important that you know that the, the ionic equation for this acids always supply H plus ions Metal hydroxides supply OH minus ions, and the only product that actually forms here by direct uh, new bonds forming uh, is actually water. So this is the reaction that's actually taking place. And H plus ions uh, make the solution acidic, uh, and so you'd expect them to give a low pH. OH minus ions are going to neutralize those H plus ions and remove them from the solution and produce water uh, which has a neutral pH. Um, and therefore we'd expect that the pH will change as the OH and H, OH minus and H plus ions react together to make water. Well let's see how that actually happens. So I've put the reaction up here and what I've gone for here is to try to picture what the pH curve looks like down here and in this box here I'm going to show you what's actually happening in the solution so you can imagine this is in the, in the contents of my conical flask so I'm going to start with acid in the conical flask so I'm going to have H plus ions and I've put it in red here because acids give uh, red colors uh, with universal indicators so we've got all these H plus ions um, and as you might expect the pH is going to start pretty low um, when we we do this so I've put it down there at pH 1 now, as you're adding in more of the alkali, you're going to add some OH- ions in here. And what's going to happen is these OH- ions are going to react with the H+, and they're going to together form water. Okay. So we've now got these H plus and OH minus, and I'll just sort of scrub them out as best I can just to show you that they're actually gone. We don't have them anymore. We've just got H2Os. And as a result, uh, we've still got uh, we've got still got an excess of H plus ions, so we're still expecting a pH below 7, but we haven't got as high a concentration of H plus ions. And so you'd expect the pH is going to gradually increase as you add more alkali. Now there comes a point when I'll have added enough alkali to get rid of all of these H plus ions. So those will have turned into H2O, these will have turned into H2O, uh, these guys here are going to have become H2O, and in the meantime I'm going to basically have gotten rid of all of these. So now my solution contains entirely H2O molecules uh, and as that is the case 
we've got a pH of 7. And so we get a very, very sharp rise. As soon as the H plus is basically starting to run out, the pH rises very, very steeply until we get to this point here where we have what's known as the equivalence point. So this point where the pH is rising very, very steeply will be known as the equivalence point. So before we got to equivalence here, we have uh, more OH plus ions than OH minus. Um, whereas at the equivalence point, we've got equal concentrations of H plus and OH minus. Now, what interesting they said equal, um, and it's really delving into something slightly more complicated here, but H2O can actually break apart into H plus and OH minus. But firstly, very, very few molecules do that. And secondly, you always get one H plus and one OH minus from every H2O. And therefore, you're never going to have more H plus than OH minus if you've just got H2O around. Now, here's what happens next. As we continue adding the alkali, and we're going to have more OH minus ions in the solution. Now there's no H pluses for them to react with and therefore the pH will continue to rise because now we've got more OH minus than H plus and therefore our pH is alkaline. If we just have an alkali around with OH minus ions we have an alkaline pH above 7. So that's the reason for the shape of this curve. Now let's just think briefly about what's going to happen if we start with the alkali and the conical flask. So I've just shown a picture of it up here. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, at the start the pH is going to be very high. We're going to have a, a very high pH because we've got lots of OH- minus ions. Um, and then similarly, the same sort of story is going to happen as I add H plus ions in here. Uh, I'm expecting that these guys are going to react together to make water and eventually and basically getting rid of this as a result uh, and eventually uh, we're going to have so many H pluses have been added that all of these OH minuses are going to have become neutralized and we only have in here water. So what does that look like in terms of the curve? Well, the pH is going to drop uh, as H plus reacts with OH minus, and eventually the pH is really going to drop very steeply, at which point we are again at what we call the equivalence point. Where we've got equal concentrations of H plus and OH minus. And then finally, as we add more H plus into the solution, as we add more acid into that conical flask, there's no OH minus to neutralize it, and so we expect the pH is going to drop. Um, and so that's exactly what happens uh, in this case. So this time, uh, we start off with a situation where we've got a higher OH minus concentration than H plus, and so we've got a pH in the alkaline region. Uh, at the end of the experiment uh, we have a higher H plus concentration than OH minus and in the middle we've got equal H plus and OH minus concentrations, the definition of a neutral solution.